this is Ritesh Srinivasan and welcome to my channel. In this video, let's look at this new uh, development from Google Research, which is Simplify Transfer Learning for uh, your chest radiography model, right? Now, every year, a billion chest X-ray images are uh, taken globally and uh, this aid in the detection and management of health conditions from collapsed lungs to infectious diseases. Generally, chest X-rays are cheaper and more accessible than other forms of medical imaging. There are some challenges for the optimal use of chest X-rays. They are like you require trained radiologists and in some places there is a shortage of trained radiologists. Okay. Uh, then there is this interpretation variability between experts. Okay. Uh, between different institutions and there are, then there are presence of rare conditions which require which is familiar only to some subspecialists so high quality chest x-ray interpretation is a challenge okay this is where there are recent machine learning uh, developments um, for actually uh, identification of these chest abnormalities in an automatic way so there is this effort to build deep learning models but then what is the problem with developing deep learning models? You require large amount of data, right? You require large label training data sets. And in medical domain, getting this large data set is expensive and it is time consuming to create. Okay. And only limited data will be generally be available across uh, your uh, geographies and things like that. So how do you actually now develop a robust model for chest X-ray detection, right? So what is the typical deep learning process? Okay. What is the general deep learning process? The general deep learning process is like you have a generic model. Okay. Image pre-training. Uh, it is similar to traditional transfer learning. Okay. You take a model and do uh, this thing. And, and then what you do is that you do some star specific fine tuning right so this is your typical uh, development of a, a generic deep learning model for uh, you know image classification or things like that now what is the change they have introduced in their uh, chest x-ray network okay what they call it as chest x-ray network is what is the approach they have taken is that so they follow a three-step process in the first step they do a generic image pre-training similar to traditional transfer learning then they do a chest x-ray specific pre-training okay and then a task specific pre-training okay the first and the third steps are common in machine learning uh, pre-training on a large data set and labels that are not specific to the desired task and then fine tuning the uh, change over here is they are doing an additional step of chest x-ray specific pre-training okay so they built a specific chest x-ray specific image classifier which employs supervised contrastive learning. Okay. So what is supervised contrasting learning? Uh, this actually pulls representation of images that have the same label, right? Abnormal and pushes apart representation of images that have different label. Okay. So one normal image and one normal. So what they did is they pre-trained this model on de-identified uh, chest X-ray data sets of our 80,000 images which was uh, you know from Northwestern Medicine Apollo hospitals in US and India. So this is a huge data set. Okay. They leveraged the noisy abnormality labels from natural language processing of radiology reports to build this chest x-ray specific network. Okay. So once you build a chest x-ray network like this, then this network can create embeddings. Obviously, right? So one layer before your classification layer or two layers before your classification layer, you can make that as embeddings. Okay. These embeddings are nothing but information rich numerical vectors that can be used to distinguish classes from each other. Okay. And this can be more easily trained models for specific medical prediction tasks such as image finding, for example, airspace opacity or say tuberculosis, right? Or say hospital patient outcome. Okay. So the chest X-ray network can generate embeddings for every image in a given chest X-ray data set. For these images, generated embeddings in the labels for the desired target task such as tuberculosis are used to then train a small model. That is the whole idea over here. Okay. So that is what they are showing over here in a traditional this thing. Uh, what you do is that uh, you will have actually a lot of images and then you will do a, a 
classification right for a task one in the chest x-ray this thing uh, what you do is that you will uh, train a chest x-ray model okay for a given task generally requires a large number of labeled images and computation whereas with the chest x-ray network and tool providing this foundation each new task requires only a small fraction of labeled images computational resources and neural network okay parameters compared to rebuilding the entire network from scratch okay so this is what they are talking about okay now uh, what is the effect of this particular uh, you know chest x-ray pre-training right so what they are saying is that they um, uh, visualize the embedding layers at each step of the process for using airspace opacity as an example okay so what they do over here is that before this super contrast based pre-training uh, there was poor separation of normal and abnormal embedding so if you look over here the embeddings are kind of overlapped right everywhere the embeddings are overlapped so this is before this uh, supervised contrast uh, learning uh, based pre-training so once they did the pre-training you can see over here is that you can see that some kind of a separation is there between these two classes right i can separate like this even though there is some kind of overlap i can separate between airspace opacity and air uh, um, positive and negative uh, using this uh, visualization of these embeddings so this was for this airspace opacity as an example okay and this is using tsne uh, visualization so this is generic this is chest x-ray specific network embeddings okay so now let's look at uh, you know how does this typical network look like so this is what i've explained before you have an input which is a chest x-ray image which is fed to a embed uh, network right and there is embedding and then finally there is a small classification for your prediction okay so how does this figure look like so first they take a generic pre-trained network this has been trained on a non-medical pre-training uh, where you have data volume is large but data is not relevant to this domain so this is you take an untrained network and then you do a pre-training on a generic domain then you do chest x-ray specific pre-training right where you have some data also in this case they had 80,000 uh, sorry uh, 800k images basically and they also had uh, you know this this data is relevant chest x-ray so this is your chest x-ray pre-trained network okay now on top of this network you can actually build task specific layers where you have very less volume for a certain case for example something like tuberculosis if you have very less number of images you can build a tuberculosis classification non-linear model okay you can have these task specific layers towards the end of this network right and you can fine tune this uh, full network also for some tasks okay if you have some amount more amount of data okay in this way in this chest specific uh, network you can actually uh, get some previous last layers as embeddings for new uh, images right you can add this task specific layers and you can take some layers intermediate layers over here like this for your uh, embeddings okay so that is the good part of this particular uh, paper okay and what they are saying is this our uh, their research suggests that that adding second stage of pre-training enables high quality models to be trained with 600 fold less data in comparison to traditional transfer learning approaches that leverage pre-trained models on generic non-medical data sets we found this to be true irrespective of the architecture or data set used for natural image pre-training okay so the key learning for me from this paper is that uh, this can be adapted to say mr images ct images or the other images in the medical domain so what you do is that first you take a pre uh, network which has been pre-trained on some generic domain okay but then if you have enough labeled data you can do this supervised contrastive learning pre-training okay on your data this could be ct data also then for some specific cases where you have less data for some classification you can fine tune by using this network as embeddings in this case it is for chest x-rays but i believe that this can be also extended for other modalities like ct or mr okay so that is what uh, they are claiming over here and uh, yeah these are the results where they are claiming that you know this particular contrasted with the super contrastive learning um, what you call supervised contrastive learning chest x-ray based embeddings with non-linear model is giving this kind of aoc 
uh, area under curve, not AOC, this is area under curve, right? Uh, so you can see that it is better than a generic, basically it is better than a generic this thing, right? Over here, uh, fine tuning a generic pre-trained network is this. This is general pre-trained network with non-linear model. This is our, uh, this chest x-ray, whatever uh, this network with the non-linear model. So they are, they are showing an example over here average across six types of findings this is across tuberculosis you can see a clear cut difference over here uh, this is for covid positive outcomes so in general these embeddings are performing better than you are taking any other pre-trained model and then fine tuning on this particular task okay so another good thing is that they have also released a particular tool called as uh, chest uh, or whatever this chest x-ray foundation tool right so uh, they have released this particular tool uh, which you can actually access for researchers where you can use these embeddings you can give your chest x-ray images and you can get these embeddings and then you can use it for your uh, particular tasks okay they're also expecting to work with partners such as northwestern medicine and apollo hospitals to uh, explore the impact of this technology further so this looks like a very good development for people who are working in the domain of medical imaging because this idea can be taken and be used for other uh, you know kind of problems as well and for chest x-rays if somebody is uh, working on chest x-rays and they have very less data they can use this network to actually get uh, you know better embeddings so it has to be tried before we can actually claim that but in this paper they have claimed that I hope this video on this chest x-ray network and uh, you know simplified transfer learning for chest radiology model is uh, useful for you. If you like the video please like share subscribe to the channel see you in another video. Happy learning.